If you're a researcher like me, you probably want to consume all of the things and have a big backlog with your podcasts, with your physical books, with your digital books, with your audio books, and then your articles, and then the blog posts, and then the newsletters, and it, it just becomes a bit of a mess. I've, I've tried to navigate this over the last few years, and in the last three months, I've actually sort of not drastically changed, but com but definitely changed where all of these things live because I realized something, well, I knew it, but I actually told myself this, that when you read something, it takes time and it actually takes longer than a couple of minutes that you think it might take. So how do I actually manage all of my read later list, the podcast and the rest of it? I do it all inside of my calendar app. Now, granted, the calendar app looks very empty at the moment because I haven't actually done anything because obviously it's Christmas break and I don't plan on working too much. But as you can see, I decided, you know what, let's record this video now. Uh, let's just zoom in quickly so it makes it a little bit easier. You can see I've got a timestamp 3.15 to 3.45. I start a little bit earlier, but this is my inbox task list. It's uh, something that I look through at the end of the day. You can see day shut down, look at the inbox. And any task that I think I'm going to do, I put in either read later or trampoline. I run a trampoline business, so any task related to that goes into trampoline. And you'll also notice at the top, loads of other task integrations. And my read later list management, my podcast management, YouTube, etc, 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 all relates to this task list and the source it comes from. For the blog posts, for the articles, for anything that I see on social media, I will actually add a task inside of Morgan, that's the app I'm using, and you can see if I left click, I've got a link inside of the description and then roughly what the paper is, and it goes into the task list. Now, how is this any different from any other read later list app? How is it any different from a big old list of stuff that you end up collecting? Well, these nine things will disappear in the next couple of days because what this read later list is, is essentially a place for Morgan to say, hey, you need to check this. So this is like a first check. My podcast that I have in Spotify also go into here. I don't have any here in here at the moment, but I'll have a link and I'll write the name of the podcast, put the link to the Spotify episode in here, and then it will come into this read later list. The only things that don't go in this read later list as a step one are things that come through email and that's in the newsletter so if i go to google tasks you can see my task list um i've got the tax in there but then i have research bite this is a newsletter and then i have changes to judging cycle which is something else but this is a newsletter that i want to actually read later i want to see if it's worth doing something about and going in depth but that's just step one that's capturing it in one place however step two is the reason why it comes into morgan and step two is these things here they're, they're frames inside of Morgan. If I go to the edit button, you can see this read later frame is in my tasks Google Calendar, but it's a frame inside of Morgan, which is not an event, not a task. It's an ideal time frame that I want to do something. And you can see I've added a filter for Morgan task list read later, and there are nine. That is the nine things inside of this read later task list. And what this lets me do inside of Morgan is when at the beginning of the day, if I go to the beginning, uh, you'll see right here, plan my day. It's a recurring task that happens every day. Obviously, I've already done it today because it was this morning and I will push the AI planner button you see in the top right. For this purpose, I'm just going to start the AI planner here and you can see now it's suggesting working memory AIF. That's active inference and you can see high priority, high priority. This is two hours, this is two hours, this is due on Saturday, this doesn't have a due date, but it's showing working memory inside of this frame. It does overflow a little bit, but that's because of the settings I have with the frame. And then the rest of it is done tomorrow. So Morgan is suggesting to me when to read things later, depending on the priority as I've added. The critical eco D, which is here, is put in for half hour slot because that's the default time I have. And then it's got the reconceptualized paper afterwards. At the moment, I'm only planning for three days. I can plan for eight days. Days, I'm not going to but what this does is means anything that I have in this read later list Morgan is scheduling time for me to do it if I realize which is what I did with this reconceptualized paper I had to look at the abstract and realized actually this is gonna be a long read I just went in and added two hours and now it's scheduling a time for me to do it so I don't have to think about oh when am I going to read that paper when am I gonna go in depth on that paper 
Maybe I look at this critical on eco D, it's a, a paper that's been crit critical on ecological dynamics, and I realize actually, no, this is longer than that. I need to change this estimate to, let's say, two hours. And because I'm still on the planning, it's going to resuggest what's going on, and now it's put in a different paper in this slot. So it removes the the cluttering of decision making that I, I I normally made or I used to make with read later. Like, what do I read now? When do I read it? If I want to read something before Saturday, Morgan will schedule it for me. If something is more important than something else, I add a priority to it. And you can see this one's actually been scheduled in the past because I started it, um, which is why it's only got an hour in here because I started it beforehand. And what this also lets me do, if I scroll up to the top, is you'll notice I have this research byte from Google Tasks in the morning. If I exit out of this planning session, nothing's been planned. If I scroll down, you can see nothing's there. It was hovering and glowing. They were just suggestions. And if I come up here, email tasks and edit, this is a time frame for my email tasks. So all of those newsletters that I looked at and saw the title and thought, you know what, I might want to read that. I add it to Google Tasks using the alt, sorry, the shift T hotkey inside of my Google Mail. Well, that sounded weird. Gmail, not Google Mail. Uh, and it's gone into Morgan. And Morgan, again, is looking for it and saying, hey, maybe you do that in this time. I've got the same with Microsoft to do and Outlook email as well for work emails. And they all appear in this time frame. You can see this hovered time frame, which goes on at the same time each day, each week. Now, I've been running with this system for about three months now since I started Eastbourne Trampoline. And you can see my read later list is nine. It It's nine. Well, technically 10 because I go to Google Tasks in there as well. But it's it's below 50, which is which is which is amazing. <laughs> um, but what do I do with these things afterwards? And I do want to add a caveat in at this point because it's going to depend what you do. I personally like talking about things, so I may turn it into just a conversational topic with another coach or a coach developer or someone else that I'm talking to about coaching or research or academics. Or it could be something that I'm putting on the other YouTube channel that I have, Coach Danny, which I'll leave a link to up there. And that's where I'm doing a more formalized project around something that I'm consuming and reading, but it will all end up in Obsidian or ClickUp, mainly Obsidian with the research and reading, which is what I'm going to go through now as part of step three. So here's a couple I did earlier. This one, things that should matter less in school, was from a newsletter. It's not currently in ClickUp because I'm still planning this project out, but I feel like this is going to be something on the other channel, and we use ClickUp as our project management tool because it's free. Basically, Notion isn't free when you integrate it into Morgan, so we use ClickUp instead of Notion. That's really the main reason. Um, but when I look at this research, I've done the session inside of Morgan. I've ticked that off. But what I've done is I brought in notes inside of my Obsidian from the article you can see there. And now it's going to be a different task inside of Morgan because I've created it in ClickUp. And now that can be scheduled in the project management side of my Morgan management, which is where the research on this particular topic continues. However, maybe it relates to something else. And that is what I've done here. You see cognitive load theory in sports. This is actually a collection. You can see we've got one, two, three and four. These are four different things that appeared in the read later list inside of Morgan that I realized actually related together. So I've put them into one Obsidian file, brought the notes together, and I'm going to turn this into one project. So I'm reading through the pages because it's in Morgan as a tick box. Yes, I've done it. Now I'm going to go through it again, but this time it's going to go in. Well, you can see it went in as an Obsidian task because I'm in Obsidian. And it went in as a five minute task to review and say, hey, do I want to turn this into a project? Yes or no. As you can see, I ticked it off and I completed that on the 23rd, which was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. So now it's in ClickUp. And just to give you a little bit of orientation of what I'm talking about, these are the Obsidian tasks. So that's the Obsidian task that would have appeared. It would have appeared inside of my Morgan. Morgan would have suggested when to do it. I will have done it. Then it will have been create, or I will have created a task inside of ClickUp. And then again, it will appear inside of Morgan. You can see here, there's one from ClickUp. Uh, I don't think I have one from Obsidian at the moment because again, it's Christmas time. I'm not meant to be doing much work, but they will appear if I go to, let's just say miscellaneous because I know that everything is in there. Miscellaneous, everything will appear. So if I want to go through some Obsidian things, I'll go through it on Saturday or Sunday. Do I want to turn this into a project in ClickUp? Yes. Do I want to keep this as a project for my personal channel or the tech channel, i.e. this one, then it will stay as this one and then it will be a Obsidian project task rather than a ClickUp 
project task. And of course, if there is an article at some point throughout this thread that just doesn't seem interesting, I've actually gone through it and I've ticked it off. So because I've ticked it off in Morgan, it will go away in Google Tasks or it'll go away out of Morgan. And the link is gone unless I've saved it somewhere else because I think it might be useful somewhere else, i.e. in another project. But it means that I've addressed it and it's not sitting there pending. And that was my problem with Zotero. My Zotero is still filled with, I think, 276, something like that, articles pending for my review. I'm not going to go through those. Let's just be real. It's not happening. Don't have the, uh, well, I don't want to make the time to do that. If something appears, I'll do it. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a, a quick video. I say a quick video. A, a brief explanation of how I'm using my calendar to manage my read later list.